Hey everybody, this is Mike with Unity Intercom and wanted to do a quick demonstration of a couple of different ways that you can work with audio IO. And more specifically, um, I wanna show some of the ways that a lot of our users in the field are working with um, larger amounts of audio. Um, as you may know, the way that Unity Intercom works with external IO sources is it routes them into the PL channels or it routes them into uh, what we call program feeds. Um, and so you're limited by the apps because all the apps have six party line channels, but it's very often that we'll have uh, users with, you know, let's say you had a dozen IFB feeds and you wanted to map those one-to-one -to, -one to a dozen different channels. So what we would do because we're limited with six party line channels is we would use groups. So we would make a second or a third or a fourth group and we would just call them like page two, page three, page four. I'll show you how we do that. So let me bring our Unity server into view here. Um, and so my input device, gonna, I'm using loopback for demonstration purposes. And so my input device here is this Sydney Show Audio. Uh, it's a little aggregate audio, it's a bunch of audio here. And I'm gonna be outputting um, to another uh, separate loopback device called comms. And so I'll, I'll kind of show that as well here. Here's my, um, here's my loopback. And so this is my aggregate audio. It's a combination of my M2 device and a virtual pass-through audio source. Uh, I've got Reaper generating a um, bunch of audio here for, uh, for us to look at for demonstration purposes. So if I needed to bring all these channels of audio into Unity, what I would do, or what a lot of our users do, because um, there's different philosophies on that, um, is they go here, and let me move this out of the way just so you can focus here. We would go into the channels page, and I've already pre-labeled these, IFBs one through 12. Now remember, we can only access six party line channels at a time. So I'll show you what we do. So I have, I'm gonna map these one to one. And uh, I don't necessarily need to do all of them here, but um, this is what I would do. I would map all of these one to one and I would go over, in fact, since I'm here, little note, uh, the input gate is likely too high a lot of times. Um, I, I kind of do a negative 48 for my input gate, especially when this audio is coming from like an atom frame or it was Maddie being transferred over to Dante or it's ClearCom. Um, this input gate's a little too high generally, and so I usually do a negative 48 or, or even lower. Um, and then this is, of course, where you would, where you would output so if you wanted to do a one-to-one -one output as well um, so here is how you would do this now after your six we have seven eight nine ten you know i got to be able to deal with these as well the way i would do that is i would make a group and so i'd go to my groups tab and i made a page one and i made a page two so group two is actually page two and so here's how this looks in the client i'll, I'll fire up the client and kind of demonstrate the way that's going to look and I just spotlight it here, fire up my client. Boom, I'm logged in. So page one is all my guys here. Page two is all my other IFBs. So this is a quick one-to-one -one mapping. Um, you are limited to really interacting with one group at a time. Um, there's some there's some ways around it. Con, you know, contact us if you there's the, you know there's some little tricks that you can do with program feeds and such. But in general, you're pretty you're you are limited to one group at a time. Um, but yeah, so now we have 12 different IFBs and they're mapped to the PL channels. Um, and so I will quit the client here and let's hop back to our Unity server. So. That was a quick way to bring in audio into PL channels. Now, what we probably ought to do is leave some of these PL channels um, as, as comm channels and maybe not inject audio into them so that we do, because we're going to want channels that are 
clear for communications. Uh, this was just a quick demonstration of how to throw one-to-one -one mappings, one through 12, you know, in the channels page um, and how to, you know, how to group them into page one, page two and such. This is just what I, I see a lot of users doing this in the field, but you'll customize this to what works best for you. So I, I would, I would recommend, you know, leaving some of the PL channels available so you can actually talk on them. Uh, if, if there's loud IFB audio being generated into them, you're going to have to talk on the direct users point to points um, and not on the PL channels. So I, I think it's, it's a good idea to leave a couple of those. You can bring audio in as, um, you know, mappings on the PL channels and, or in the and or, or you can go into the audio feeds tab here and I can give specific users um, monitoring ability. So I can come here and I can figure out, let's say input one, call it IFB one, input two, I've already kind of called it IFB two. Let's find me in this giant list. Here I am, I'm Mike M. And I can give myself access just like this to audio inputs one and two. Um, that is a di little bit different way. That audio is more private. It's not being uh, thrown into a channel. It's being, um, it's, it's now a listen only selectable program audio for me. Um, and what I would do is I would fire up my app. So I've just done that here. So let's go to, if I can figure out where I'm going. Let's go into the client again and I have given myself, and it's right down here in the advanced program feed area. Um, you will need the advanced program feed license in order to access this. And this allows you to have a, uh, up to 64 different program feeds. And so I have my IFB1 and my IFB2. I can listen to one source at a time. And what I, but what I also have though, because if I'm listening to them as program feeds, um, I can... I can mess with my program feed ducking settings. So for example, when audio appears on the, on the comms, I can set my program feed to, to duck ver a variable level. Uh, and that gives me a nice clean way to monitor some audio. Uh, like if somebody direct talks me, um, what I could do is I, I could set that to be a full duck. So I know I don't miss that. Now here's a little, here's a little tip. So in this scenario, I'm, we're injecting audio into like a whole bunch of PL channels. So there's going to be comms audio, what, what Unity thinks is sort of comms audio um, all the time. So I probably don't want to duck because I'm never going to hear this program feed. So I'm actually going to, uh, I'm, I'm not going to duck when audio shows up. I'm, I'm not going to do program feed ducking, but I am going to do direct talk ducking. Um, so when someone direct talks me, I don't miss that. And if there is some audio, if, for example, if we left a comms channel alone that doesn't have audio being brought into it, if we have an available comms channel that's actually for comms, like, like, or if, if for example, if I've routed a producer into a party line channel, uh, and that's, a, and that's important audio, I could designate that as a priority channel, which remember is done by pressing and holding, uh, for a few seconds on the app and making this little light blue strip appear. So that has been made a priority channel. And so I want priority channel ducking. So I can, I can pick something that's important to me. And I want to make sure that the other audio sources, all these other PL channels duck when audio appears on this important prioritized channel. Uh, that's the priority channel ducking. So working with audio, you know, excuse me, working with program feeds is a nice clean way. Um, it's a little, there's a little more setup to it. A lot of times, a lot of users don't mess with it, but a lot of people do. And uh, personally, I would rather have an audio, uh, I'd be listening to a program feed and have, have the luxury of all my, uh, all my little ducking settings here. But um, it just depends what's right for this, for the scenario. You know, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer here. So let me go ahead here and quit my client there. Okay. And so um, that I think that's just about concludes what, what we're trying to talk about here. Um, the last thing I will mention here, let's go back to the channels page. Um, you, you've see, you see that I have tried to route some audio out. So I've done the one-to-one -one output one output two. Um, 
how that looks is remember on our output device that's that's where this where the comms audio is going to go and uh you'll see right here in loopback um that audio is that that's here um that's on our comms and so if i were to come here and do a test press this little 10 second test tone button and uh i'll kind of make sure we have room to see there we go there's my audio so that would be routing unity comms audio back out to like dante virtual sound card or back out to an io device back out to a studio technologies model 45 r or c uh, for interacting with ClearCom. and so the, yeah, that would be the responses on unity minus anything injected um so that's that's a good clean way to to kind of work with that so um, hopefully that was helpful. I just thought it would be a good idea to clarify some of the things you can do with audio in the server and, and what I'm seeing a lot of users do and such. But thank you guys very much.